Joining us tonight, Congressman Matt Gates, a member of the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committees. And Congressman, it's great to have you with us. I want to, if I did not say this, uh, Judge Royce Lamberts is to be congratulated for making this decision. Uh, I, I think it's terrible that it's taken seven years, but thank God we've got judges like uh, Lamberts to, uh, to make such decisions. Well, unfortunately, Lou, there won't really be accountability here because the prior Justice Department gave out so many immunity deals <laughs> to Hillary Clinton associates before ever knowing the extent to which they may have been involved in criminal behavior. And so, you know, I, I think that the opportunity for us to have gotten some real consequence for the people who broke the law, unfortunately, has likely passed because Jeff Sessions was so slow kind of on the uptake and yeah. taking the reins of the Department of Justice. But I have to go back to your last segment on China, Lou. I think that before you the do that, can, sure. Can I say I've been reduced in this instance uh, to and I am genuinely pleased by the judge's decision mm -hmm. because I would just like to see some scintilla of truth emerge about Benghazi from mm -hmm. our officialdom, uh, the United States government. It would be splendid to see. Well, we that's know how, what happened. That's how I've been uh, I've worn down over the course of the past seven years well, on Benghazi. Well, we, we know what happened. It's not like this is some great mystery we still have to solve. Mm -hmm. There was a situation where Hillary Clinton was more worried about geopolitical balance than she was about the safety of the Americans who were having to, ford, to ward off a terrible attack in defense of our ambassador yeah. in a circumstance that had been erupting for quite some time. And so, like, it's not like history will have some great question as to what occurred. It's just that the people who were engaged in the worst conduct won't be held accountable because the Congress is an inept institution at holding people accountable. Well, certainly uh, <laughs> some conferences that it are. <laughs> One comes to mind, but we won't, we won't go there. Uh, you were fascinated by uh, my brilliant interview earlier with Gordon yes, Chang absolutely. in China. I want to remind you no. of that question. Absolutely. And there's an important point here. While the government is shut down, President Trump is still working very hard to make this country richer. One of the ways we can do that in recognizing the realities about China that were in your last segment is to have reciprocal trade. It is outrageous to me, Lou, that China can put 25 percent tariffs on U.S. cars. We put a two and a half percent tariff on the cars that are coming over internationally here. And we don't give our president the authority to immediately put tariffs on other countries that put tariffs on us. And if we mm -hmm. did that, they wouldn't abuse us so much. We'd actually get better trade deals because we wouldn't be the laughingstock of the world unwilling to fight back when other countries put the American worker behind the eight ball. And Congressman, I want to give you credit. Uh, you're a co-sponsor of the legislation. Uh, Congressman Sean Duffy with us last night uh, talking about uh, what had happened to a number of co-sponsors uh, right after the Koch brothers, the C Chamber of Commerce, the Cardinal himself, Tom Donahue, who has run the chamber for years, representing business, big business, multinationals, and the hell with the national interest. Uh, congratulations to all of you who are giving, uh, working to give the president the tools uh, to deal with these uh, these extraordinary trade deficits. Uh, and people don't even realize what happens to our economic growth rate as a result of those deficits. Uh, but uh, good for you. But this president will take them on, Lou. I mean, the, oh, I the difference that. is that presidents that are Republican and Democrat in the past have been the valets for the special interests on K Street and the multinational companies. Those people didn't elect Donald Trump. Donald Trump was elected in spite of the millions of dollars that big business put against him. So he has a unique opportunity to actually fight for the American worker. And where you look at where this 2020 election is going to be won in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, right. Wisconsin, Minnesota, there are a lot of people there who want a fair shake at, well, at putting the best product out into the world without being the laughing stock as a consequence of bad trade deals. Reciprocal trade will get the job done. And I'm glad that even during the shutdown, this president is fighting for fair reciprocal trade. Absolutely. And, and I think we ought to also point out something. The very people who are attacking this president uh, are the, uh, the U.S. multinationals and the business lobbyists uh, and the big companies that own fake news, that is the news media, who are attacking this president because he means to go after them and to represent the working man and woman, their families, and the middle class of this country, small businessmen and women. Uh, and, uh, and right now, they're going to be... But will the I'll Democrats I'll make a prediction us. for you. 
There yeah. will be more Trump Democrats than anyone can possibly imagine by 2020. I'd and, love you know, to find a few of them in Congress, Lou, to join us in this bill because a lot of Democrats represent these districts in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Minnesota. And you, what are they going to say to their workers when multinational companies keep trying to offshore jobs and we've yeah. got this president and a few Republicans fighting for the American worker? We could use a few of those pro-Trump Democrats here in the Congress. Well, go to work, Congressman. Go to work. We know you we will find and him. have. Congressman Matt Gates, good to have you with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Up next.